Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Rundown. I'm Sunny Galt, I'm a messenger with United Network News, and we are the official news channel for CARE, which stands for the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth, because that's what we're here to do. We're here to help humanity and restore our planet. And we discuss what we call the real news. We have a newscast that comes out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can find out more information about us and who we are at unitednetwork.earth. This podcast, The Rundown, is basically a week in review. So we take a look at some of our top stories that we talked about over the last week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on our news, and we give you those top stories. Quick review. And it's a great way to catch up on stories that you may have missed throughout the week. Sometimes our newscasts can run a little long, especially the World Situation Report, if there's a lot of stuff going on. I think two of our newscasts this week broke the two-hour mark. That's a lot of time, right? And we know that your time is valuable. So we try to highlight some of those top stories for you. That includes local stories as told through the eyes of our amazing field messengers. We have a segment on the news called The New Earth, where we inspire you with where our planet is going and all the cool things coming our way and amazing things that people are already doing. We try to shine some light on that because there's some really good people on this planet that deserve more attention. (laughs) We have regional stories, which is the news as it happens around the world, okay? And we don't focus on governments. We're not as concerned about what governments are doing unless they pass a bill or something that can impact the people. But we're not interested in the rhetoric and the talking heads that go back and forth, just news that impacts you guys. And then we have something called our World Situation Report. And if you've never heard that before, it's really going to blow your mind. It's kind of a combination of something that you may have heard once or twice or maybe some things if you've ever been to a church service or any kind of religious service combined with, I don't know, maybe a Star Trek episode, (laughs) something like that. That's the easiest way for me to describe it. But it's what's really happening I always tell people, truth is stranger than fiction. So if this is your first time with us, welcome, sit tight, Uh, you're in for a treat. We talk about some really cool things. And we have access, the reason we can talk about this stuff is we have access to the highest security clearance on the planet. And it's a structure that most people aren't aware of because people think, oh, this country has their own security system and this country has this and this country has that. But that's not really it. There were beings and are people today that are now basically overseeing all of that. And so when we say we have the highest security clearance, we have access to all of those communications. And so we truly do know what's happening on this planet. And trust me, what hap- what happens on this planet is very important. We impact the entire universe. Most people don't realize that either. And so we talk about some really with you right now. That's okay. Just take a moment, you know, put it to the side. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. That's a saying here in the United States, which means take what works for you. Because it may just be that you're on a different journey right now and some of this stuff just isn't going to make sense. We go really deep, really deep. And so if that's you and you're like, oh, most of this stuff made sense, but that one part, oh, I don't know, then just sit tight. Just sit that to the side for now and maybe it'll make sense a little bit later. Okay, but we always encourage you guys to think critically and ask questions questions. That's the biggest thing. Don't just assume that because anybody says anything, whether it's myself, Kim on the news, anybody else, any kind of talking head on media, don't just assume because they have a platform that what they're saying is truth because there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation out there. So people spreading misinformation, they don't realize that the information isn't correct. And then you have people that are specifically planted for disinformation, which is information they know is incorrect. And here we want to give you the real news, the truth, right? And sometimes it's hard to weed through that mess. All right, let me give you a heads up on what we have coming up in today's episode. So we're going to start with our field messenger reports. We have reports today from South Africa, Nigeria, USA, Romania, Sweden, and the UK. So we really get around this <laughs> this week with different, different countries. And the New Earth, we're talking about pre-birth and soul agreements, what those are. 
are asking for help in that area, which is refreshing. And we're going to talk about a place called the Gentle Barn, which is just, oh, I love this place. It's a place where animals and humans can connect. And specifically today, we're going to talk about communication and how that happens between animals as well as humans at the Gentle Barn. In our regional stories, our regional stories, we we do about uh, 15 or so stories in each newscast. So what I do for this podcast is I try to find some commonality between the stories. And those are the types of stories we feature. So I've got three categories for you today that we've got multiple stories in. Internet and tech, marriage and family, and some stories about housing. And then in our world situation report, oh boy, this was the week, right? This was the week of, and I'm going to say the alleged Trump shooting. That may fire up a lot of people when I say alleged Trump shooting, We will break this down a little bit. There's some key things that I'm going to give you, but really you need to watch the newscast because we had clips and, you know, a lot of cool stuff. I'll talk more about that in just a bit. We're going to talk about consciousness transfers, specifically the ability for demonic entities to multiply themselves and create what we're calling demonlets, (laughs) which are baby demons that can occupy humans, which is terrifying, right? But it's a very real thing. So we're going to tell you what happened this week. And then, oh my goodness, there was a global IT outage, right? And it took down people that were trying to travel, right? If you're trying to make arrangements for travel, it affected hospitals. There were surgeries that couldn't be performed. It was a big old mess. And a lot of people are aware that this happened, but not the story behind what really happened. And it is a big, long, crazy sci-fi story, all right? Well, I say sci-fi. Take out the fiction part. It's not fiction. It's real. Like I said, truth, stranger than fiction. All right, let's get started. Today is Saturday, July 20th, 2024. Here's the rundown of stories you may have missed this week on UNN. All right, we're going to kick things off with our amazing field messengers. Our field messengers are the heart and soul of United Network News. It's really all about you guys. You guys are changing the face of news. And the way you do that is by taking your camera, your cell phone out with you every day like you probably do. And when you see news happen or something that you think that other people should know about, record it. Tell us what's going on. does not have to be fancy. We just need the information from you, and then we have a team that puts together those stories. So this is a great opportunity. If you've never submitted a Field Messenger report before, we encourage you guys to do that and be part of our Field Messenger family. More information is available on our website at unitednetwork.earth. Okay, in each of our newscasts, we have a couple of Field Messenger reports. So on Monday, we kick things off with Neela from South Africa, and she has a bit of a heartbreaking story. She went around in a community in South Africa, and I'm going to say it's Boshik, I think is how you pronounce it, the name of the community. They are fighting for survival. Apparently, mining companies have come in. They have devastated the area. This was once a thriving farm town, and she shows you just how bad it it is, you know, with the homes, with the area, it just kind of looks run down. She says it's threatening water resources with all of their new operations. And this is more of a story of our planet nowadays. It's not really the best thing for us, for humanity, for the planet. And it looks like this is one of those things that's doing more harm than good. And we need to be aware of these things because something like this may be going on in your community and maybe it needs to change in other places as well. We also have a report from Agwumba Abasi, and he is in Nigeria. This was a fun story. So he shows us, um, when, you, when you see the video, it looks like there are a lot of people standing kind of in a circle. And then there's two people in the middle that are, or wrestling. (laughs) It's like a wrestling match. But what you're seeing is the end of their planting season. And at the end of their planting season, the villagers gather together in these town squares and the youth, they wrestle. This is like a, a tradition of theirs. But it all has to do with, it's kind of like a celebration, which, you know, I never knew about. It's kind of a cool thing that they do. And it's fun to see exactly what it looks like. So thank you, Awumba. 
All right, on Wednesday, we have a couple of stories. Ruth from California in the United States, she shows us how she knits. Um, she said crochet, so I'm not sure if there's a difference between knitting and crocheting, but she creates these bears, these tiny little bears. She puts them together for children in Africa that are affected by HIV and AIDS. So this is obviously a beautiful thing. It's a symbol of love and care for these children, and she shows us how she puts these bears together. Also on Wednesday, we have Monica in Romania. So I believe it was last week. I love how Monica does this. When she does her field messenger reports, a lot of times she creates more than one story from wherever she went, right? So if she went to um, some sort of historical site, she'll find different angles. And so she can create multiple stories, you know, from that single visit. And this is another example of that. I think it was last week we talked about the Danube Delta and she was talking about the ecosystem and how it helps the animals and how the whole area thrives. Well, she found a side story to talk about, which is about pirates, Apparently, this is kind of a lure, a myth, I don't know, maybe it's more than that, <laughs> that there were pirates in the area because this area has a very unique landscape. It's very remote. And historically, it's a place for pirates to hide their buried treasure, which is kind of interesting, right? And then on Friday, we have two more stories, Susan from Sweden. She shows us what midsummer looks like in Sweden. She says this is a vibrant celebration. It's filled with dancing. She shows us how they make these flower wreaths, which are just so beautiful. Everything's out in nature. You have to see the video. It's very pretty. They have all these amazing seasonal foods, and they celebrate midsummer. And then Jane in the UK talks about Scotland. This is highlights from her trip to eastern Scotland. And she shows us more about its rich history and its culture. One of the things I took away from that story is she thinks she may have seen a portal. So an area in the past that was used as a portal. And she said there was a black cat that was actually guarding the portal and she had some telepathic communication with the cat. interesting that a cat was guarding a portal and and she was able to have that conversation all right those are our stories if you guys want to see these stories and you're not a member you can go on YouTube and Rumble and see all of our newscasts but the most recent newscasts are not posted until a week after they air through our app and for our members. So if you heard something you really liked, my advice is to wait a week after we release them and then they'll be on our YouTube and Rumble channel. Let's talk about the new earth. So our planet is changing. We all know that. We can sense that. Humanity is changing. We are rediscovering what I like to call our amazing superhuman abilities. And this is what this segment of the news is all about. Yes, we need to know what's happening in the world currently. But we also want you focused and manifesting the future. Because we are, as humanity, we are incredible creators. So whatever is in our head... <laughs> and whatever it is that we're thinking about, we are manifesting into reality today and in our future. So let's think about some good stuff and let's have some good stories about what other amazing humans are doing and let's inspire and uplift one another. That's what this is all about. So as part of this segment, we usually have an interview with someone where we talk about, you know, important things and then we've got some uplifting stories. So let's start with our interviews. On Monday, I talked with Kelly Bowker. All of these people have been on the show before. They're reoccurring. She is an angel channeler and she gives practical advice on living your best life based on what the angels have told her. And in this segment, we talk about pre-birth agreements, which are also sometimes called soul agreements. Now, if you don't already know this, and this actually explains a lot about life, before you come here, you have an agreement of what you want to learn in this lifetime. Now, not everything is planned out. But it's like a it's like a to do list. I love to do lists. I have to do lists like all, every day. I, I have to do lists. I like to cross off. Think of your life as a to do list, and there are certain things you wanted to learn. 
not necessarily do. It's not like, oh, I want to go see this place and I want to live in this country. That's how our human mind thinks. But our eternal mind thinks about concepts and principles and uh, loving people and, and learning different relationship lessons. And so you have an agreement before you come to Earth as a human. And your goal, even though you don't really know it, you forget, is to check off everything on your list. That's your agreement. And when you know that you have that, then your life starts to make a little bit more sense. Sometimes people are like, oh, why would God allow this, source, creator, whatever your term for God is? Why would source, our creator, allow XYZ to happen to that child or this? The truth is they had a soul agreement. And when you understand that, it's easier to process some of the things that seem very horrific in this world, right? And you don't know other people's soul agreements. We don't know how what this person does, how that affected this in their life and this in their friend's life. Like everything is connected. We are all one and we are all connected and we are all on this journey together in a sense, right? Because we're all impacting one another. So anyways, this interview with Kelly explains that a little bit more. I also asked her, hey, can you change your soul agreement? Because a lot of us are very ambitious when we come to this planet, and our soul agreements are pretty crazy. So we talk about that as well. It's a fun conversation. And then on Wednesday, we had Belinda Tung on the news. She is a mom, and she created a website called perfectchild.org. I love Belinda. We have some very interesting conversations from a parent perspective. And in this segment, we talk about it really taking a village to raise your child and how in some societies, that is still the norm. In many villages and places like that, the whole family raises the child. They have a lot of support and help. Here in the Western you know, side of the world, it's not so much that. Uh, people move away. You're kind of expected to kind of do everything on your own. And we know that isolation is not the best way to do anything really in life. We are very social creatures. That's how we were meant to be. And so we need other people right? We need animals. We need other living organic beings in our life. And so when it comes to raising your child, you need other people and you need that support system. So we talk about that. And then on Friday, we have Ellie Lax. She was on the news. She is from The Gentle Barn and they have a couple of locations. Ellie is in Los Angeles. Oh, but I can't remember. You'll have to go to their website and check out the different locations. But I love what they're doing. So Ellie at The Gentle Barn is first of all, she rehabilitates animals. And then if the animals are ready and up for it, which I'm sure there is a process of communicating with the animals, are you ready for this? Then they can help humans that come to the gentle barn. And this is all about rehabilitation in different ways, connecting with animals, animals connecting with animals and and helping each other. And then Animals helping humans if the animals want to. And it's all permission-based. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about now, then you really need to watch the segment (laughs) because there is a way for humanity to connect with animals in a very special way. And and that's what the segment is about, communication at the Gentle Barn. All right, let's share some uplifting and positive stories. We had a story about a new prosthetic that has been designed for water use. So if you have lost a limb, going into the water can be very difficult. There's various things that you have to use. It's kind of a complicated process. So now amputees can fully enjoy the beach or the pool or different swimming facilities with something called the fin, (laughs) F-A or F-I-N. And it eliminates the need for all these multiple devices. It is made from 3D printed carbon fiber, fiber, sorry, enhanced with nylon, and it features holes that let water pass through smoothly. It can be worn all day long. It allows for seamless movement, and it just makes life a little bit easier, which is amazing. Pretty soon we'll be growing our own limbs, but before that happens, we've got this cool new product that people can use. All right, let's talk about embracing diversity. So there is a new trend across America where many schools are now hosting what they call inclusive proms. These events ensure that every student, regardless of their ability or background, feels valued and included on that special night. Planning an inclusive prom involves thoughtful consideration. So they have to think about things like selecting wheelchair-friendly locations, 
accessible venues and having different types of activities that all students can participate in. And of course, the beauty of this is it creates a sense of belonging and unity and can also encourage school spirit. And our final story on the new earth is about the Bay of California. So there is a nonprofit that has cleaned up the local waterways. And in doing so, they made way for the return of salmon who abandoned the area years before. So this is a great way to show how our planet is changing. And yes, humanity is helping with it. There's a lot of things that are going on. Volunteers have removed 1.3 million pounds of trash. I can't even think about how big that is. That's a lot. From multiple lakes in San Jose. And get this, this was a 10-year effort. It didn't start right away. The salmon didn't come back right away. That's a recent thing. They saw swimming, or (laughs) swimming, that's a combination of salmon and swimming. (laughs) They saw salmon swimming up the river by the hundreds to reach their breeding grounds. Now it's time for our regional news. And like I said earlier, these are stories, you may have seen them here and there in other places. We don't talk about governments necessarily. We talk about things that are directly impacting the people. So unless a new bill is passed or something like that, we may kind of cover governments, but not really interested in what they have to say. We believe that they are puppets and we really want to know what's impacting you guys and feel like you want to know too so you can live your lives, right? So I've got three categories. I basically look looked at all the stories and I was like, yeah, we've got basically three main topics, right, where I could pull some stories from. We're going to start with internet and tech. So the big story on Friday's newscast was this global IT outage. And this was this was a big issue. It caused widespread disruptions across several countries. It impacted airlines, railways, hospitals, and banks. And what's being reported, which is which is true, is that this is this is linked to an issue with Microsoft systems. That part is true. <laughs> but it doesn't just stop with Microsoft systems. It's what's behind it that no one is talking about, right? And we're going to talk more about that in our world situation report. But let's talk about how this was impacting the people. So major airlines were disrupted in the U.S., the U.K., Australia, and India. They did face delays, and some flights were grounded. Check-ins were handled manually. Numerous airlines were warned of delays due to, or were warning of delays due to technical glitches. And then hospitals in the UK and Germany were unable to access patient records. And as a result, they had to cancel a bunch of surgeries. Australian banking and media services experienced shutdowns and financial transactions were halted in South Africa and New Zealand. So again, when we say worldwide, this this was everywhere. So you have probably been impacted by this in some way, even if it was trying to do some sort of financial transaction with your credit card or something like that. I believe most of these are back online. Again, we're going to talk more about this in the World Situation Report because you're not going to believe what was actually behind all of this. Okay, next story. We're going to talk about AT&T. So hackers have stolen call and text records from nearly all AT&T customers, affecting tens of millions of people in America. The breach spans six months in 2022 and one day in January of 2023. It includes phone numbers, text or called, and the number of times these interactions happened. It does not include social security numbers or the call content. The breach also impacted non-AT&T customers using its network through mobile virtual operators. And the FCC has opened an investigation. In Australia, they had a major data breach, which exposed the personal information of 12.9 million Australians, included names, full names, phone numbers, dates of birth, home addresses, Medicare numbers, and information about prescribed medications. The data was taken from systems up till November of last year. Authorities are now urging people to not search out the leaked data online, as doing so could support cybercriminal activity and be potentially illegal. And our final story here in Internet and Tech is about 
internet access in the Tonga, in parts of Tonga. Tonga is an island country in Polynesia, and they have been without internet access now for more than two weeks due to a damage, due to damage of an undersea cable, which was caused by an earthquake. This left a third of the country's population without access to internet, severely impacting local businesses. And the situation worsened when the government ordered Starlink to cease operations until they were granted a license. So we've got two issues going on here. Resort owners and others reliant on satellite internet say these shutdowns could be perilous. So it's really impacting them. They say it could also affect emergency communications and weather warnings. Okay, let's talk about marriage and family. I've got a few stories in that category. In Mozambique, in northern Mozambique, Conflict, so the conflict that's going on over there, has led to an increase in the abduction and the forced marriages of young girls. According to a recent report, jihadi groups are using kidnapping, rape, and forced marriage as warfare tactics, which instills fear in the local communities. And girls are often abducted at a young age, and then they endure years of captivity And the crisis has aggravated pre-existing issues related to what they call child marriages. Families are sometimes preemptively marrying off their daughters to secure dowries or even for protection. And when they do this, a lot of times the children face increased risks of violence, trauma, and complications during pregnancy. Speaking of pregnancy, several companies in China have been sued for allegedly requiring female job applicants to take pregnancy tests, a practice that's technically illegal under Chinese law. They discovered 168 women at 16 companies were asked to take pregnancy tests during pre-employment health checks. Employers cited the high cost of maternity benefits as the reason for having people take these tests. This led to at least one woman being denied employment. Obviously, that's an issue. And this investigation has resulted in a lawsuit for that woman. Also related to pregnancy, a new AI-based ultrasound technology is revolutionizing maternity care in Uganda as well as other African countries. This software accurately dates pregnancies without needing a specialist like a sonographer, someone that specializes in, you know, looking at the baby, using different types of equipment, and it's allowing more access for expectant mothers. Staff have reported an increase in attendance and early engagement in prenatal care, which is crucial for addressing complications like stillbirth. This technology also has the potential to predict high-risk pregnancies and support better decision-making. And of course, that's significant for people in the area. All right, last category. We're going to talk about housing. So The Bank of England is having some issues right now with what they call their CHAPS system. So that's an acronym. It stands for Clearing House Automated Payment System. And it is affecting high-value transfers, such as home deposits. This processes around 200,000 transactions worth, get this, 360 billion pounds And those are daily transactions. They say this was triggered by a global error at SWIFT. Other retail payment systems, including ATMs and bank transfers, remain unaffected. The issue was resolved and services were eventually restored. ESCOM, South Africa's state-owned utility company, is struggling with unpaid municipal debts, threatening its recovery efforts. They say many municipalities can pay, but they haven't prioritized it, which has led to a yearly rise in unpaid bills. The issue threatens ESCOM's profitability after years of financial struggle, struggle and power outages. Despite recent progress with fewer blackouts, investment remains deterred. ESCOM is now taking legal action. And our final story has to do with Thailand. So Thailand plans to roll out a household handout scheme funded by their budgets for the next two years. This initiative was approved by a government committee, and it aims to distribute a financial boost to millions of citizens, encouraging local spending within a set time frame. The government 
says their goal is to stimulate the economy, but they have faced many challenges in securing these funds. Details are expected to be presented to the cabinet soon with full implementation to follow. And now it's time for some highlights from our World Situation Report. On the news, we have Kimberly Gogan from the Office of the Guardian join us. And that's not a new title. Um, Kim has had it. Other people, well-known people, have had this title in the past. Uh, some people that come to mind, Moses had this title. And King Solomon had this title. So if you have read any kind of religious text, you're probably aware of those two beings. There are others as well. But this is not a new thing. This is not a title that we just made up. But it is an important title. A lot of people don't know who Kim is. And I'm sure Kim is fine with that. (laughs) But she has a very important job on this planet. And she has an agreement with God Source, the Creator, to do various things. She is the trustee of the global repository for money for people to do projects and some really good things to help humanity moving forward. Um, But it's a much bigger system than that. And a lot of what Kim has been doing recently is stopping the deep state from, first of all, having money to do all the nefarious plans like starting World War III and sending out pandemics and doing things like that. She is literally starving them right now of funds. And it's very, very effective. But there's a lot more that Kim does because she has access to what originally was the alpha system. You had the alpha system and the omega system. This is an uh, an intelligent system. Um, alpha was always the organic side of the system. Uh, etherical systems. And now we don't have Alpha and Omega. Now Kim basically combined those together to create what we're calling the light system. This is how we're going to move forward. This is how our planet's going to move forward. This is going to change, completely change our monetary system in ways where things are backed by gold. And gold is a conductor of source energy. So receiving energy from source from God happens in this way. And it's how we all get energy on this planet and are able to sustain that energy. So there's a lot more behind the financial system than what meets the eye, especially what's talked about in mainstream media. So we talk about a lot of that on the World Situation Report. So let me give you a kind of a, a breakdown here. We'll just go day by day. So let's talk about what was discussed on Monday. So if you recall this week, this was the big week where we have the alleged Trump assassination attempt, okay? And you had to be living under a rock to not see some of this stuff, right? So I'm just going to give you some highlights of the stuff we talked about. If you really want our breakdown, our initial breakdown, I encourage you guys to check out Monday's newscast because we do play a bunch of clips and we just have some banter between myself and Kim about what possibly could have happened. If you have been following our news you know that we have specifically said that for the last two months, the operatives running the Trump camp over there and that campaign have specifically talked about a planned fake assassination attempt on Trump to gather support and to boost him ahead in polls. That is a fact. We have been talking about this for two months So keep that in mind as we go through and and talk about some of these other things that may help you decide whether or not this was actually real. It is very clear that those operatives are playing the martyr card. If you watch the Republican National Convention, I saw bits and pieces of it while it was on, it was played up constantly, constantly, right? And there's a lot of people that are coming out to support Trump Because, let's face it, no one should be shot because you are running for presidency. That doesn't make any sense. If that was the actual case. But they're definitely playing the martyr card. They are trying to divide Americans because obviously Trump is very divisive. And there's a lot of social media programming going on with this. So please watch what you're watching and what you're participating in. They are doing the same thing they did with 9-11. They are throwing up a bunch of images that uh, make people upset and draw out a lot of pain and hurt. And none of that is good. Whether it happened or not, it's not good to have those images in your head constantly. So be very careful of what you're consuming. Here's another interesting thing. 
around the world, when you look at the news, there were some news agencies that were able to report on this quote unquote assassination attempt before the assassination attempt happened. So how do you do that? We also know in some cases, not necessarily related to this Trump incident, but that the media is given ample notice before stories are supposed to go out. And these are stories that are supposed to be about, oh, something just happened. Well, how do you get it a day beforehand if it just happened? This makes no sense. And we're seeing that play out with this alleged assassination attempt. Now, what the Trump operatives are doing, that is concerning, okay? But it's also important to look at this on a larger scale, okay? Because what's more important is what happens as a result of this and the possible reaction. The Trump supporters, a lot of Trump supporters carry guns. They really believe in Trump, you know, and the rhetoric is really high. So could this push people to do things with their guns that they shouldn't be doing? I hope not. Okay, but that's the That's the bigger concern right now is not whether or not he got shot and who did it and who the shooter was and the snipers and all of that. It's more about what's going to happen as a result of this. The other thing to understand is that a lot of these events, if it is something that whether it happened or not, they're usually planned on some level, okay? And they usually happen in threes. This is just how the deep state works. So our next concern is what could happen next? And that's really what Kim has been focused on this last week, because there have been mentions of other political killings, things that could lead to a possible World War III. And this is just how they do their nefarious stuff, right? They like to do things in three. So we're definitely on on the prowl for that. We definitely want, you know, want to be mindful of those things as they pop up. And on a positive note, for those of us on the other side going, oh, we're so tired of this movie, this story, this, you know, this is this is draining. This is all make believe, you know, people in masks running around. You know, we've got dead presidents. It's it's insane. Right. So just a little light at the end of the tunnel here. (laughs) Another thing that Trump camp um, was hoping would come of this, whether he was shot or not, is that donations would go up. Now, they have made some money, but it is not what they were expecting, which is why you saw even mentions of a possible shooter in Milwaukee at the RNC, the Republican National Convention. If you've been watching the news, you see more and more threats of shooters in different locations. This is an effort to draw in more donations because they're going broke and they need some money. So knowing that they are not getting the money that they hope to get out of this event, whatever happened, is a good thing, right? Because they are preying on individuals that really just want this country to go in the right direction. These are patriots that love their country, and they are putting their faith in someone who is abusing it. Okay, moving on from Trump to talk about deep state. So the deep state, as we know it, they were planning to have a complete financial takeover by July 15th. So that would have been this week. And there was a lot going on last Friday over the weekend. And this is a soundbite that I want to play for you of what Kim was going through and and what she was trying to do. So according to Kim, there was a lot more dark matter coming into our planet than going out of our planet. We're trying to change everything over to the light system and have 100% light on this planet. Doesn't mean that all the beings on this planet are going to be filled with 100% light, but at least they'll have a a fair shot at, at choosing good over evil as opposed to having, you know, all of this dark matter around us that influences us. So we're trying to get the dark matter out. It's been a bit of a struggle. We would be at 95 or even 99% light, and then we would go down to 75% or even closer to 50%. And Kim would clean and clear with her team and try to get it back up. But there was something that was bringing in more of this dark matter. So let's talk about what Kim was able to find. 
This has to do with some really dark entities and how they were able to do a consciousness transfer and create what Kim calls demon lets. Take a listen. So consciousness transfer isn't just for consciousness. Some beings in the multiverse were allowed to actually do a full being split. Kind of like if you've ever seen a starfish, if it cuts off its leg, you know, it'll grow another leg and then a whole starfish will grow out of the other piece of the starfish. Well, there are certain beings in the multiverse that had permission to do the same. And the same they actually did. Uh, some of those beings, being Marduk, Enki, Enlil, uh, Anu uh, had the ability. Lucifer had the ability uh, to do that. Uh, and there are a few others. We're going to go over here in just a second. So not only were there large pockets that we were finding on Friday and Saturday of it's almost like a being without shape and form is the best way I can describe it. It has all the characteristics without having, uh, and it does have physical matter to it. It does. You can actually see it with your own eyeballs. It's not like, um, you know, it's like an esoteric kind of thing, like, oh, it's just in the in the ether. No, no, no. It actually has shape and form. Uh, if you um, are very connected, you would see these things kind of like you see the Tarzakians. And the Tarzakians are the smoky beings that you see out of the corner of your eye, the moving shadows where there's nothing to be a shadow of. But these things are much more dense and larger. Okay. The Tarzakians look at the way that they look because they are eighth density lower astral beings, which means they are etheric. So you're actually seeing an etherical being in your home or around some other people. I see them around as protectors almost for some pretty dark beings. So these folks here um, were allowed to do that to some degree, meaning they could occupy multiple spaces at the same time to I would say the only one that was different of that particular group would have been Lucifer. Now, Lucifer and a few other demons here, Baal, Baphomet, Belial, yeah, we're in the B people, <laughs> <laughs> Asmodeus, Andromalus, if I'm saying that right, Beelzebub, uh, Mamun, Astaroth, and Azizel, these uh, demons had the ability to split like a starfish. Wow. So we call them demons on the one hand, and then we call them demonlets. <laughs> so, well, to some degree, because eventually, even out of the leg of the starfish, an entire starfish grows. Mm -hmm. Now, these beings could inhabit a human being. They could inhabit beings anywhere all the way up to the sixth density. They could act alone and not even be in a human. They just don't grow as fast. Okay. Uh, so being uh, in a human, having that energy source allows them to grow faster. Um, they, of course, try to make deals all the time. And sometimes people with egos buy it. Uh, they allow for the inhabit to be inhabited by one of these beings, and therefore you become part of it. And it's like a way to have your very own ball, so to speak, collective consciousness. Hmm. It could also inhabit a planet wow. and have influence on the creation or destruction of that planet. It will also have a computer program attached to it for every single soul that it splits off. Now, these beings are old. They've been around for billions of years. This is not new. Imagine how many little starfishlets they made <laughs> yeah. during this time frame, and it's an awful lot. Now, don't pass out or anything, but it turns out that 25% of the people on this planet have a solit from one of these beings. Oh my gosh. 
Yep. Would they know it? Yes, they absolutely know it because um, I don't know. When we spoke to Agent M and he was talking about his discussions with uh, Mayor Rothschild, mm -hmm. uh, if he didn't tell you, I'll have him come back on and explain it to you on what it's like when you're talking to one of these people. It's almost like you're talking to two different people. Yeah. Now, once you're a walk-in or you make yourself available to these people, I should say, when you make yourself available to these people, then the next step is uh, anyone can walk in. Now, the next part that's interesting, and this is probably the reason why most people think of black magic, they think of this being done at night or on holidays, uh, which is true uh, to some degree. So at nighttime, after sunset, the soul that's in that person can actually leave the person and exist out in the world. Yeah. And that's when they do their work. Now, it's always dark somewhere. It's always night somewhere. Mm -hmm. So that's where they can do their work. They do work not for that person. They do work for the demon that sent them into that person. Wow. However, they are promised a certain amount of power and control for having this demon up in there. But as uh, Agent M will tell you, that the voice changed when he was talking to him one time. He said that, you know, Lucifer doesn't mean anything to me. And this was Agent M, of course. And he was trying to sell him. Yeah, because it's all about getting people to buy so that you, too, can become a starfish lit of a demon, <laughs> you know, hey, I don't know what to call these things. They they break off and then become a whole second being. Wow. Um, so it's weird. Uh, so but he said his voice immediately changed and he said, I am Lucifer. Mm -hmm. He started to tell him things about himself and those types of things which nobody would actually know it's not like it's you know in an intelligence file or anything like that I mean these are things you know where they try to hit your button to get you kind of to go down mm -hmm. so to speak but the same thing that I felt with Marduk it was like what is it you desire you know they're always trying to sell you something and it usually comes in one of the following flavors so um, there is control over your own soul. You know, that's one thing. Uh, there is also a soul influencing. Uh, you can control souls. You can, can, you can collateralize those souls. You can get other people to sell their souls to us, and we will make a deal with you. In this case, you're probably talking to Baal the controller of frequency, the controller of, get this, the sound of silence. <laughs> I think there was a song called there that. There was a song. Yeah. Maybe you'd be better off singing it if everybody's going to hang up if I try. Uh, <laughs> well, because it's a frequency, you know, everybody thinks frequencies, you know, and they think about these tones that they play sometimes and that kind of thing, both positive healing and negative. Um, and a lot of that would come from Ball. Uh, he was the frequency manipulator, and with frequency, you can manipulate matter on an etherical level that will eventually influence your physical person. You know, mm -hmm. it'll make a physical change in the world, but it's mainly used for etherical changes in your body. You feel it as a spiritual change sometimes if it positive frequencies. This goes in the other direction. It was a lot of power to manipulate the way things work in the world because Everything has an etherical control. It's one of the highest planes. You can change somebody's mind. You can, you can do things like inception. You know, what is it that you want? Um, my last run in with ball, other than in the last 48 hours, uh, ballettes. I had ball and ballettes. Uh, my last run in was where um, things started changing. It would have been February of, I think it was uh, 2020 if I recall, 
And the argument at the time was that he was basically telling me about all the wars he helped start, all of the leaders he tore down, all that kind of thing, all the changes he made in the world. And I felt like I was watching an infomercial or one of those video resumes Mm -hmm. thing because he was offering me all kinds of stuff. And I said, no, thank you. I've got this. Yeah. You know, and, um, but I didn't really run into the rest of them, at least not that I'm aware of, uh, until, you know, the last three or four days, because at the same time, the certain people with the, you know, the Q people out there were talking about uh, quantum flip, it's happening, that kind of thing, um, and the increase of dark matter, uh, who was actually doing the increasing and where was it coming from? And that was the frustration you were hearing in my voice on Friday. So it turns out that all of these beings and their consciousness and their consciousness lets, their little lets, their babies, I don't know what you call them, um, because a lot of them aren't babies anymore. They look just like the original uh, wow. now. They've been up in there so long. Uh, and it's not just humans on Earth. This is throughout the multiverse that this can happen. So uh, it's a lot of beings that had an infection. Uh, so um, the next one I had run into, uh, the one that I found the most interesting, let's start with that, was Beelzebub. Okay. Um, his main uh, presence here on Earth was actually in Mount Kagrat, I hope I said that correctly, in Liechtenstein. It's mm -hmm. spelled uh, K-U-H-G-R-A-T. Uh, Beelzebub was actually the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Well, that's not usually attributed to him. It's usually attributed to Jesus. <laughs> no, no. But unfortunately, remember how they twist everything around on you? Yeah. You know, he called himself the kingmaker. He was the controller of governments, political. His sector was the power center. Um, also family members. He would have been the one in charge of the family members, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, he was equal to, uh, according to itself, um, equal to uh, Lucifer in power. Uh, and he tried to sell me a lot of stuff. You know, he tried to sell me, uh, uh, we'll make you the king of whatever country you want, or queen, I should say, of any country you want. We'll, you know, we can do this. You want to have governments. I can give you governments. I All you got to do is take this up in your body. I'm like, oh, no, no, my friend. <laughs> You know, off you go, <laughs> off you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait, was this the proposal recently or is this a long time ago this happened? Uh, 24 hours ago. Oh, okay. So still wheeling and dealing after all these still years. wheeling and dealing. That's Beelzebub. Not, okay. uh, don't get Beelzebub and Ball confused. Yeah. They like B words apparently, you know, tongue twisters. Uh, so there was a lot of... Uh, of interesting conversations that we had. Now, another one you'll find interesting uh, is a Zazel. I think I'm saying that right. I'm not really good with these pronunciations. Uh, a Zazel had a, a few different charges on this planet. And one of them was he was the controller of knowledge. And I know that because when I went to Stonehenge in England, where he was, that he tried to tell me he would give me knowledge beyond my wildest dreams. I can give it all to you. You'll know more than anyone in the whole world, so on and so forth. But the second thing that Azazel controlled was money. Greed. And money. In the system, there was a program tied to him in there for money. The, what we call money, debt. The more of it you have, the more of a potential connection you have to Azazel. I know it's dastardly. And these were part of the curses that were on money. Now, those bankers that we know as banksters and those types of things, on the highest level, of course, not necessarily down the bottom, probably all have agreed to this second oath. This is how you got to 25%. There's a yeah. lot of people in the world. And we're talking about the high-level bankers. We're not talking about the people that are tellers at your bank and sure. you know that kind of thing. 
So, uh, yeah, it's just very interesting how everybody, not everybody tried to make a deal. Once we went through the first several of them, um, you know, they eventually, it was like, well, you know, <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going, I'm out. <laughs> Probably the smartest thing a demon's ever said. Okay, on Wednesday's news, I was not on with Kim. She was running a bit late that day, so I recorded the news earlier in the day, and then she recorded her part a little bit later. She started with giving some updates. I'm not going to play a sound bite, but you can check this out on the newscast. She talks more about what the Trump organization is doing and the people that they are planning to bring on their cabinet should they win this election. We call it a selection because we don't believe you ever really elect the people you want to elect. It is pre-selected for you and you are basically watching a movie as to who actually wins. But they are already prepping for this. So I'll just give you some highlights of this. Jamie Demon, who right now is the CEO of Chase Banks, he has been tapped as the new Treasury Secretary under a possible Trump administration. This has not made the news yet. We're just giving you the behind the scenes. So he's not a good guy, guys. He has been responsible for the economic assassinations of countries in the past. He has done some really nasty cryptocurrency stuff. It, he's just not a good guy. So for those of you out there that are still on the Trump train, this is information that you really should consider. Would a really good group of people that are trying to save humanity allegedly, allegedly, would they be doing these things to harm businesses, organizations, groups, economically, in other areas? Probably not. The other thing to know is that Trump's running mate, his VP pick, J.D. Vance, was part of Skull and Bones. Look it up. It is a Yale fraternity, a very secret society, and it just so happens that a lot of bad people come out of that group. Kim also talked about a person that has passed away. Uh, she passed away a while ago. We've talked about her. Her name that she went by was Mei Hua, and she... She was doing a lot of nefarious stuff on this planet as well. You probably remember us talking about her. Well, apparently, the deep state has assigned someone, a female, with the last name Rodriguez, to allegedly take over May Wah's spot. And this has to do with assigning gold. And that's something that May Wah did a lot of. And apparently this Rodriguez person, they believe she's of the bloodline because, you know, the deep state loves their bloodlines. She believes she's of the bloodline of Mei Hua. So therefore, you have this person with the last name Rodriguez going around trying to assign gold to treasuries, to global headquarters. So Kim does talk more and provide some clarification on why they thought this new Rodriguez person could step into Mei Hua's position. And clarification on gold ownership. So we're not going to play that sound bite, but I want you to know that is in the news. By the way, the May Wall line is the line of Lilith. So not a good lady when she was on this planet. Did a lot of bad stuff. She's no longer here, but the deep state likes to keep these people alive in some shape or form or have some sort of descendant take over and, and do their bidding, right? The soundbite that I want to play for you is an update of what we were talking about on Monday with these little demonlets. Kim had more information. She found out it was actually tied into the COVID vax, that these little demonlets would try to inhabit humans. They would leave at night and try to inhabit other beings at night. And it's pretty bad. Not to scare you guys, this is information because we believe you have more power when you understand what's really happening, right? So it's not to scare you, but this is what's what's really happening. So here's Kim. There's a few things that some of them I kind of hesitate to tell you and and but now now that things are a lot clearer and a lot cleaner um my understanding of what's going on and what began to happen um to some degree uh, the end of last week but it really ramped up on Sunday and then by Monday I was still trying to sort out what the heck is happening uh when we talked on uh Monday Okay, 
So when we talked on Monday, we talked about approximately 25% or hundreds of millions of people being infected. Now, being infected means that they had to some degree a marker uh, that would allow for them to have a demon walk-in, um, for lack of a better term. Uh, something from the lower astral that could have the ability to inhabit their body. Now, the, you would think, well, there has to be some consent for this. And in the current modern day, that is true. But way back when these protocols were put in place, it wasn't. Humanity was spoken for by the group we call the parents. And the parents had full authorization to take care of their quote unquote children, which was all of humanity, and authorize that walk in at the time the programs were developed decades ago. This, these are decades old protocols that were put in place. However, with the now recent covenants returning to a sovereign being, that didn't quite work out the way that they wanted it to work out. Now, there would have been a lot of innocent people that were hurt if that had actually been successful. But all along the way, you know, we have to trust in source. And there's something that came up uh, that proves that point. As frustrated as I am with delays, sometimes delays have saved a lot of people's lives. And, and underneath this protocol, we would have been in trouble. Um, now, of course, you have a lot of the deep state running around with something in there. Uh, uh, they still had something in there. I didn't even know that some of them still had something in there because these things that are in there are, I call them demonlets. You know, they're a piece of someone else's thing that inhabited their body with their full consent, by the way. Uh, now, the reason why this is. Okay, with these folks, something that they've been doing for a long time, um, I'm trying to explain this in the best way I can, is this thing that is inside them inhabits their body during the day in which it talks to them, it gives them ideas, it gives them thoughts, and obviously, based on what we see happening with the deep state all throughout the world, they're obviously not positive thoughts. But the less connection that they have to computer systems that are functioning, such as Omega, and the less connection they have to the lower astral, the demons obviously are getting not so smart. Uh, and they're going off of old knowledge that they have, uh, and they're also going off a little bit of spying that they do. So during the day, they're having these conversations with these folks internally. Next, uh, and sometimes if they've been infected long enough, you're not even having a conversation with the person you think you're having a conversation with. The other thing they do is they have the ability at night to leave their body. And when they leave their body, they come out in the shadows. So you'll see them out of the corner of your eye, moving around, that kind of thing. And then they go back in during the day. These also have, you know, what we would call more skills than humans. They have telepathic powers. This is where a lot of espionage takes place. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, information for their corporations takes place because these things can go all over the world and no one, unless you're awake and aware, um, can actually see them. You know, some people think they see a, sa a shadow out of the corner of their eye. Oh, it's just probably the wind or whatever it is. But the rest of us know really what's going on. Now, that was for the deep state. The next group of people that were on the list to actually do a swap with, because their DNA could hold something very positive, such as full source energy, or something really negative, which is full anti-source energy, or in this case, it's spawn, what I call demons, uh, or the machizel decks. Uh, they were also on the list to be inhabited. They wanted to take over this line because they knew that 
if we ever left any of the uh, dark ages and moved to a neutral age or moved to a light age, that the Machizel decks would have a lot of power and therefore they wanted all the power on earth. So they were sending them over to after that bloodline or our bloodline for a, quite a while. <laughs> uh, this caused an enormous amount of pain to most of these people. Uh, it caused a lot of illness in a lot of these people. Uh, some of the people I know, um, you know, felt like they were having a heart attack or going to die for one. Uh, another one couldn't breathe. Uh, and it would happen mainly after sunset when these things were on the prowl. So they were going after that bloodline like crazy. So if you're one of these people and you experienced these symptoms over the weekend and really thought that you were going to die uh, and you could feel awful pain in your solar plexus like you were having a baby, if you're a female, you know what that feels like, or maybe having a kidney stone if you're a male and know what that feels like. It was, it's horrible, horrible pain. And it's very difficult because there were not enough bodies assigned to what was coming in to accommodate the amount that was uh, to accommodate the amount of demons okay so this was the second part of the program obviously the deep state was a given you know they'd get get their own respective demons but now it wouldn't just be over the age of 40 it would be for their entire bloodlines down to small children uh, so that was the plan all along. The next ones in line were obviously the strongest uh, as far as being able to retain that much energy. And so the largest of demons were coming after this whole line. That's why my Sunday night was horrible. And I've been doing triage on others that I know, and I'll just leave it at that, of the same line, uh, because they, they thought they were going to die. And this has been going on every single night where they are, respectively, in the world. Now, next, we have another group of people here that are say from higher dimensions that have higher uh, natural energy within their person. And those persons also were affected because there is not enough bodies to go around to inhabit. So they started going after some of those people. The You know who you are. You feel like you're not from here. So a lot of you might have also felt stomach aches and a lot of pains because what it does first is it burrows a giant hole in your solar plexus that would allow it to pass from the astral plane into the third density. And it's terrible. You would know it for sure. So this was the third target group. Uh, those that have been identified as being uh, their soul actually being from a higher density uh, that could probably retain a higher level demon. Maybe not the ultimate demon of Lucifer, but maybe someone to a lesser degree. The next tar targeted group, and this was the original targeted group of these people, uh, because I now that I saw the registry and the program, now I understand a little bit more of what's happening, was the vaccinated. <clears throat> so MRNA stands for Marduk Radio Network Access. And some of that luciferase ingredient and stuff like that that was in there, but not all the vaccines, only certain ones, um, the luciferase, or I can't remember exactly how it's pronounced, so forgive me, but I'm sure you probably remember when you were doing research on them, uh, was actually designed to not initially, well, it wasn't fully designed that way, and I'll explain why it didn't work, but it was actually supposed to allow for at the right time, when the influx of demons were running around Earth like crazy uh, and coming in through these portals in order to usher in the Dark Ages once again, like happened 250,000 years ago, then it was supposed to, at that time, allow for a DNA modification of the body to, to allow for a demon to inhabit that body. 
Now, they accounted for the fact that a large portion of the population, hundreds of millions, if not billion, a billion people, were going to actually get this vaccine. They were unsuccessful in that program, number one. Number two, the tall whites, the geneticists of the planet that used to work as slaves for Marduk, figured out what they were trying to do before they gave the technology over to the pharmaceutical companies in order to produce the vaccine. It didn't work. Yes, it made a lot of people sick. Yes, I understand about spike proteins. I understand a lot of things, but it could have been detrimental to the entire planet, if not the entire universe, if they had actually been infected. So they gave them flawed information, and therefore, those humans are still walking around. Now, in order for a vaccinated person to actually even come close, to the program, they had to manage to get you to take at least two to three shots. The only companies that were producing the alleged enhanced vaccine that had the capability of doing this was Pfizer and AstraZeneca to some degree. However, it they was completely and totally unsuccessful. But what it did do, unfortunately, is it started these beings could not go and inhabit these people's bodies for, number one, the parents don't speak for us anymore. The parents aren't even around anymore. And you have your own sovereignty, at least on a covenant level. And I know it might not feel like it in your daily life sometimes. But on a covenant level, you have this sovereignty. So it still couldn't, even if you had two to three vaccines, even if you had gotten the boosters, even if you had 100 boosters, it still isn't going to make a difference because it still needs your permission. So another flaw in a protocol that was set up way ahead of time. Next, the protocol was actually set up to return us to the Dark Ages, but what it didn't account for is all of the Golden Age programming we have had. So it didn't actually fully understand the changes in a golden age versus a light age. So in a light age, we still would have had darkness. We wouldn't have had source direct current. We didn't have a lot of that stuff. So all of those changes that have been taking place over the last couple of years also stopped this from happening. However, it didn't stop these demon things from flying around the planet all day and all night looking for a proper host, which is why everybody was so tortured uh, for the last several days. Now, as of today, at least as of the time of this recording today, um, there is less than 0.02% of the population still infected with this issue. All of the biochips have been removed. All of the biomarkers have been removed, if there were any. Uh, and then also anything that they had implanted into the machizal deck line and the others of the light uh, as well have also been removed. So right now, because they don't have a human host, they're getting weaker and weaker. But in addition to that, we developed a rotating sweep program that would basically send them all back to source on an automated basis, utilizing quantum tunnels and a few other things we have running constantly on this planet right now, because until we could make sure that we did get all the sources, which I believe we finally have as of this afternoon, we have no more leaking in, uh, and there were a few more we found yesterday, unfortunately. Uh, but most of them have gone. Okay, so that was from Wednesday's news. Now, on Friday is when we had that global IT outage. And this was a move from the deep state. They were trying to move the entire world system onto a new system. This could have actually tied into your dreams. So if you had some really weird dreams, it could have tied into that. I'm going to play another soundbite. This is another long one, but I think it's really important for you to understand what was happening behind the scenes, and I promise you won't hear this anywhere else. 
their attempt last night was to move over the entire world systems over to a completely different system. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it would have run on Microsoft Azure cloud systems and Microsoft Edge and a few other systems that Microsoft has, but they attempted to tag it on to uh, worldwide data centers. So what a data center is, is uh, it's basically a large facility that houses a lot of backbone servers and they're not quantum by any means they're basically different levels uh, they uh, have some had some accessibility to different webs uh, and those data centers would be you know you would see them as like places where uh, uh, for example if you have a, a hosting service for a website uh, they would be at one of these data centers uh, and um, they would host many different websites, but all data centers worldwide were on a network that was connected to, I say the NSA, but it's more global headquarters, uh, okay. global communication headquarters, which is in the UK, uh, Menwith Hill, uh, and a few other locations in the world that would have major access, mainly your Five Eyes countries or your Nine Eyes countries. And, <clears throat> They thought that they, that had enough computing power to run everything from uh, the FAA, uh, which is your air traffic control, uh, your Sabre system, which is the reservation system for airlines uh, worldwide. Um, uh, they also thought that they could uh, do this with the banking system, uh, with the UK's ACH system called CHAPS, uh, also with uh, the US National Automated uh, Clearing House um, Association of Clearing Houses uh, and Payment Networks. Uh, but you know, the, the funny part about the way they do things, they're, they're so, um, you would think that if you were gonna transfer, for example, all of your companies uh, or company you worked for was gonna transfer to a new server system, mm -hmm. say, you would test it out first before you launched it nationwide or company wide or worldwide even uh you know before you try to do the whole launch you would have done uh some testing on the bandwidth you would have done some testing as to its processing capabilities even when you combine all these data centers worldwide together Mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't do that they didn't test it first to see if those data centers could process all the data that was coming in. I mean, that's a lot of data. Think about how many people make airline reservations in a day, how many people, you know, uh, send an email in a day. You know, they wanted to take over all computer networks worldwide utilizing Microsoft and these systems. Well, it took about five minutes and 37 to 39 seconds for the whole thing to just burn. Oh, gosh. Yep. And then it's taken them quite a while to uh, get out of the way. So meanwhile, back at the ranch, what I did is I went ahead and I installed the key integrated media system, virtual trusted network worldwide, and I created a new cloud system for all of these different networks. And that's why things are starting to come back up now. So it's never a dull day uh, in our world, but it gave me a perfect opportunity to uh, kind of get all these networks in one fell swoop, mm -hmm. because once we figured out where they were connected to, now we don't have to kind of pick and poke networks. So it's gonna get better. Uh, we just finished probably in the last five minutes, uh, the Sabre network, which is the airline reservation network. So that should be coming back online air traffic control, and then they threw another spanner in the works where they tried to access uh, a deep web system, I'm gonna say deep, deep web system, which humans never had access to, called the Global Nuclear Network. And the Global Nuclear Network uh, was a system that was tied to, at one point in time, both Alpha and Omega, because those were the two, two final keys, 
uh, and um, so we we feverishly had to switch it over to the light system because the Pentagon here in the U.S. went to DEFCON 1, nuclear threats, and they were intending on playing war games with countries, various countries' nuclear weapons. You know, China would might nuke one country, Russia might nuke another country, the U.S. would then retaliate, and they were going to play this whole war game scenario with nuclear weapons until the, I guess, the whole world was annihilated because... They're losing. So, but but what's the end game there? Just everybody dies? <laughs> um, I guess this is if, uh, if I can't have it, you can't have it either. Oh, jeez. But yeah. they could have never done that with the nuclear codes and stuff, right? Because we've talked about this before, that you would have had the final say in whether something was actually detonated. Yeah, at minimum, Alpha would have had um, the final codes anyway, right. so they wouldn't have been able to achieve their objective with the minimal attempted access that they thought they had, but it didn't stop them from going crazy. We have people in the nuclear bunker underneath the White House here in the U.S. Uh, trying this. Uh, we have a lot of people currently uh, hacking at the banking system and anything Omega might have had tagged into the banking system, like private networks for non-humans uh, mm -hmm. that was in the banking system and those types of things. Uh, they're going all out today. It is an all-out hackorama. Now, there's a reason why they feel that they could do this at this time. Now, there is stuff going out around out there about, we talked about this a little bit, about they control your dreams. You know, we're in 100% control of your dreams, and this is on the Q clocks and this and that. And there was a frequency network for that. Uh, that frequency network had been disabled, but there was another one that was found also uh, as part of what we saw going on this morning. Actually, there was two. One of the networks that we found this morning was actually called M-A-J-I-K, uh, or a Black Magic Network of Omega. Mm -hmm. So some, to some degree, those that were trained in this and were attached to this by separate soul keystones. So uh, these would be your dark, deep state bloodline families that would have had some limited access to this system thought that they were connecting to anti-source or Lucifer or some demon somewhere, but in fact, they were actually connecting to a sentient computer program, a Maleficent one, but sentient nonetheless, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, perform this function on their behalf. Now, those networks were taken out today um, as well, uh, early this morning when they were found because it's only usable during a certain time of the month. Uh, that time of the month would be when there is a full moon. Mm. Next, uh, which is I guess why they have this major uh, uh, connection to full moons, new moons, days ending in Y, and those types of things. Kim, Do they know those... that's what they're doing? Oh. I would say no. And and were these targeted at specific individuals, or was it more for humanity in general? Uh, the specific individuals with a soul keystone would be the workers, meaning the human workers. Uh, the magic could be directed at anyone. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and I asked because I had a really horrific dream last night and I could tell right away it was not mine. Mm -hmm. And immediately I'm thinking of what, you know, Q has on their page about, you know, we're in control of your dreams or whatever. Um, I went to bed, I looked at the clock, I went to bed and this whole dream, the whole thing happened within 10 minutes when I woke up because I woke myself up out of it. I mean, it was, Kim, I think this was the worst dream I've ever had in my life. And it oh my was... Gosh. I will just, I won't say what it is because it's horrific, but I will tell you it involved myself, rape, and dead babies. 
And I was like, what? And I I woke myself up out of the dream and it was very sinister. And I could tell it came from a dark entity or a dark group of people manipulating. And I was so mad. (laughs) So if you guys are listening and you are getting in people's dreams, or if you think you're going to come back into my my dreams, think again, because I will yank on that cord so fast and send you all back to source, as many people as I can. I have no tolerance for that anymore. Uh, well, I think this is a different network. Okay. The second network uh, that we found, because I haven't seen it fired up, uh, well, since I've been doing this, I haven't seen this network alive. It, it lays dormant. Uh, and... Um, I think we've talked about this a little bit before. Have, if you haven't heard of a group called the Chimera, uh, yeah, the Chimera were um, a security group that worked with Artemis or the Red Queen, and they did her. I call them the security group because they are. Uh, they had a, a, a lot of networks unto themselves that were mm-hmm. afforded by her it, whatever it is, um, in order to ensure that whatever programs that she or anyone from the lower astral was running was able to function. The next thing this program was designed to do was to keep people asleep. Uh, Where there is joy, there is pain. Uh, You know, where there is Happiness, there is anger uh, and those types of things. So I'm not entirely sure at this moment in time, because this is all just happening within the last several hours. Um, I'm not entirely sure if um, I know it's coming from the Chimera program. Uh, I know that we've gotten those networks and programs within the last 45 minutes of this recording. Uh, but these programs appear to keep people from connecting to source. Now, the program itself is about 20 some odd thousand years old. So it's been around for a while uh, and it's designed not to allow humans to travel, uh, astral travel, uh, soul travel, um, uh, to make the full connection to your mental plane without subconscious fears and subconscious thoughts getting involved. So I'm guessing what is what you're what you were feeling last night and sensing this morning was that program being triggered. Now mm-hmm. there were um, there were plasma implants, which is a different kind of implant other than biochips and other things that we've seen that were activated as well overnight last night. And those plasma implants uh, were more focused on human beings on earth than anywhere else. Uh, The plasma implants could have affected your physical health. Uh, It could have affected your mental health. Uh, And again, they were designed to cause you pain, removal of joy, removal of happiness, removal of all the things, your creativity. Uh, You know how when you create something, it could be anything from a meal for your family or um, it could be, um, I don't know, you know, whatever it is that makes you happy when we're creating. It could be music. It can be, you know, anything that makes you happy that you create when you're in that state. You're you're a lot closer to source than you might even realize that feeling that you have of love and and energy that you produce when you're making a painting or doing an art and craft, whatever it is, um, Mm -hmm. is that feeling that would be amplified a hundred times with that direct connection to source, you know, changing the world, changing the way you look, changing all of the things in this world, making flowers in the, in the snow. I mean, you could do lots of different things with your creative powers of manifestation. So this program was designed to not allow humans to do this. Uh, The next thing that this was designed to do, so it appears, uh, is it was involved with the memory wipes uh, throughout the incarnation program. So in other words, you would only remember your fears. 
you have a fear of heights for no reason whatsoever. You've never fallen off of anything, that kind of thing, but yet you carry that into this lifetime. Also a false karma program as well. Um, <clears throat> and these beings uh, to me, um, this is what they look like to me when I saw them this morning, was they, they look kind of like a banshee, you know, like a, a female... Um, you know, uh, wild white hair, you know, black and white uh, skin. They howl like a banshee. They mm -hmm. they have this screech of, about them, a frequency that's awful. Um, mm -hmm. That is a sound that they make. Uh, and they look almost like a ghost-like figure. I don't know how to explain it. Like if you were to think, oh, here's something coming after me, this would be it. And um, for the most part at this moment, it looks like that part is stable. Uh, these types of networks could only be triggered uh, on a full moon because of a mechanism that was in the moon and a mechanism that was in uh, Earth. So mm -hmm. it, as those two things come together, uh, sometimes during an eclipse, but it could only happen at that time and only at a time when the security of the deep state, or not the deep state, I should say, but the others, that the dark others um, that participated in events here were uh, at risk of losing everything. And that time is now. You know, it's amazing how headlines make a lot more sense when you understand the story behind it. Of course, this is not going to be anything that, you, you know, you hear on mainstream media or alternative media. Most people have no idea of what we talk about, but it is the truth. And it can get kind of crazy, right? But like Kim said, they are running out of options. And all of these things that are being triggered now, these etherical things with these little demons and things like that, it is a last ditch effort for the dark to overcome the light. And they are losing on every front. I know sometimes it's frustrating, but you have to let these things play out. You being alive right now and being able to listen to this podcast means you are here at the most fantastic time in history. Not just on Earth's history, but for the entire universe, the entire multiverse, which includes all planes and densities. Everything is happening right now and it is happening here on Earth and you are here to witness this. So as frustrating as everything may be and it seems like, you know, what is good is being called bad and what is bad is being called good. Sit tight, OK, because the light is winning and the dark, you know, these systems are popping up simply because they have nothing left and they're being sent back to source and meanwhile we are gearing things up for the restoration of our planet and we're glad that you're here with us so what do you do now we talked about a bunch of stuff let it sink in <laughs> do your own research and keep asking questions that's the big thing Use your brain, right? Think critically about the information that we share. Does it make sense? The other information that you see out there, does that make sense? Start putting two and two together. And if you like what we had to say today, we encourage you guys to share this podcast with people you care about. You can go to our website at unitednetwork.earth and subscribe. That gives you on-demand access to all of our newscasts, our complete world situation reports. We also have some original series you may enjoy. Comment on the videos participate in united chat with which is our online community available through our app and you can also follow us on social media so if you go to unitednetwork.earth at the bottom of that page we have the links to our social media and we have a really cool team that puts together clips from our news so if you just want to share a clip with people as opposed to a whole podcast you can do that as well so thanks for hanging out with me today guys i appreciate it this is the rundown and i'm sunny golf for united network news signing off